Hello everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussions. I'm your host, Sean McGahey, and this is a show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, and Patreon, and contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and Day Spring Discussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Thursday, everyone. It is a cold day here in Austin, Texas. I don't know what happened overnight. It was a great day these last two days, and then all of a sudden, it got cold. The temperatures dropped. It's chilly. It's freezing. It's not like Austin this time of year, but hopefully by the weekend, we'll get some warmer weather, and it'll be a little better, but we're heating up in here, guys. I got a lot of good stuff I can talk about today. Um, DC Universe and Warner Brothers casted Superboy for the Titans series. Kevin Sujihara talking about the structure or their game plan for their movies going forward. And then, of course, there's the Alien Isolation digital series that's going to come out today, allegedly. But, of course, there's only one thing I really want to talk about. Last night, Jessica Chastain appeared on Jimmy Fallon to talk X-Men Dark Phoenix, the new film coming out June 7th. And she talked a little bit about a character. They showed off the poster that was revealed on Tuesday. And they got a little bit of a clip of the new trailer, which premiered after the show. I, of course, tried to watch Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Of course, I never watch it. And I pretty much got to the tail end after they showed the clip. That's when I jumped on. But Jessica Chastain did talk a little bit about her character, how she's listed as Smith, but that's not really her character's actual name, how she might come from space, and she's looking to manipulate young Jean Grey, who has recently been possessed by the Phoenix Force, and some possible character deaths. Well, like I said, after the show, you hop online, and the trailer was up. I watched it a couple times. Got up this morning, watched it a couple more times, and of course, that is what I want to talk about today. Anyone who's been listening to me for a long time, or anyone that knows me knows I'm a big X-Men fan. This show's name is a X-Men reference. X-Men, one of my top three things. I always say, if you want to get me started talking on a subject where I won't shut up about, talk to me about Star Wars, Superman, and X-Men. I could go on for hours and hours. Now, I also finished the Umbrella Academy yesterday. I've been trying to do that for almost two weeks now. Finally, I got a chance to finish it. I enjoyed it. I have some thoughts on it. Doubt I'm going to get to it, though, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to spend my whole time talking this uh, Phoenix trailer. So let's just get right into it, guys, okay? Now, as most of us know, Disney, very soon, within the next couple months at least is going to be finished with their purchase of buying 20th Century Fox Movie Studios. They're not buying all of Fox, like the whole TV division, as far as Fox Sports and Fox News, is still going to stay Fox. But Disney will be purchasing 20th Century Fox Movie Division, which means all the X-Men characters and Fantastic Four, all the Marvel characters that 20th Century Fox has been making movies about, is going to go to Disney. People think that they're going to take the Fantastic Four and X-Men and put them in the MCU. I have some thoughts about that as well, which I might or might not get to today. But in any event, it looks like this is going to be our last X-Men film under the 20th Century Fox banner. And then also in August, we're supposed to get New Mutants. Now, both these films have been pushed back and pushed back, allegedly having reshoots done on both of them whether the reshoots were done perhaps maybe to help them transition to disney that's just a crazy theory that's a little tin hat theory i got going on i don't think that's the case but who knows crazier things have happened but in any event this is going to be essentially our last x-men movie under 20th century fox they've been making x-men movies for almost 20 years now 2000 where we got the first x-men film and as a big x-men fan some of them have been good some of them have been bad the most recent one x-men apocalypse i enjoyed as an x-men fan although i get why people as a film didn't like it as much 
totally understandable. I have enjoyed this new trilogy of films from First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse better than the first X-Men trilogy, X-Men, X2, X3. X3, I think, is still the worst X-Men film to date, which kind of goes into, you know, this one too, because this is another telling of the Dark Phoenix saga, much like X3 was. However, in X3, kind of Dark Phoenix was, I guess, maybe a side story next to The Cure. And really, I don't know, I guess they were pushed together, but this one solely focuses on Phoenix. And I've been excited from what I've read about the story because anyone who knows the actual Phoenix and Dark Phoenix saga knows it's a big cosmic event that, you know, involves the Shi'ar and aliens and a story of epic proportions. And that's what I wanted. I've said before, the Dark Phoenix saga can lead to the Shi'ar. It can lead to the Star Jammers. It can lead up to a whole new division of cosmicness in the X-Men film franchise, much like how Guardians of the Galaxy was a way to open up and expand the cosmic universe of the MCU. You could use the Star Jammers, but time has run out on that. It's a little disappointing, to say the least, but again, we don't know exactly what Kevin Feige or the people at Marvel Studios or the people over at Disney have planned for the X-Men. I think before the end of the year, we will know, but... It's going to be a long time. Needless to say, it's an end of an era. Now, 20th Century Fox has made a lot of X-Men films. You got the original X-Men trilogy. You got the prequel trilogy, as I call it. You got the two Deadpool films. You got the Wolverine trilogy. It's a lot to sort out. And again, not all of it is great. If someone were to come up to me, and someone has come up to me, and say they want to start to watch the X-Men films... What I would tell them would be watch the first X-Men movie, watch X2, X-Men United, then skip over and watch X-Men First Class, watch First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. You can watch Logan and Deadpool, of course, too, because those are good films, but those are the ones I would recommend to watch um, as far as good, solid X-Men storylines. Really, I mean, you could almost not watch X2, but I think it's a good enough film to where I think you still need to watch it. Really, you just need that introduction of Hugh Jackman in the original X-Men cast in the first one, and then you can almost skip to the prequel trilogy, but I would say it's pretty good. Really, if you look at it too, you can go with X-Men 2, and you see the beginnings of Dark Phoenix, then skip to the prequel trilogy, namely this film, where you see actual Dark Phoenix come to pass. You don't Think about how horrible X-Men 3 was, and, you know, it's a whole new experience as far as Dark Phoenix. Now, jumping online, I always like to, you know, watch the trailer, think about it, and also maybe hop on Twitter and see other people's reactions, and it's a pretty mixed bag. Some people are excited for it. Some people think it looks dumb. Um, you know, some people think it's just going to be another telling of X-Men 3, which I really don't think so, especially given the fact that they're going a little more cosmic with it. From what I understand, it's not like Jean has this split personality like she did in X th X-Men 3. This one actually seems like the Phoenix Force's actual entity that absorbs her. And, you know, in the beginning of the trailer, she's sitting there crying, why did you make me do that? She was my friend. And then let's get into the trailer, guys. So, that first scene, you have Sophie Turner playing Jean Grey. She's crying. And you see that scene where it looks like pretty much she kills Mystique. And people are talking about, why would you give away that spoiler? Why would you give away that spoiler? Maybe it's a misdirect. Honestly, I don't care because from that first trailer, it seemed like she was going to die anyway. I th everyone kind of talked about how Mystique, played by Jennifer Lawrence, was going to die. Honestly, I can either A, see it as a misdirect, or B, she's not the only character that dies in this film. Now, Dark Phoenix does take place 10 years after X-Men Apocalypse. They're jumping through decades here. First class was 60s. 
uh, Days of Future Past was 70s, Apocalypse was 80s, now we're in the 90s. So it's been almost 10 years that these characters have been together. Obviously, the relationships have been built and stronger. And before they start doing the whole Phoenix thing, I need to see that. We as the audience need to see it. I need to see Scott and Gene's relationship, how strong it is. I need to see, uh, you know, Storm and Gene's friendship. Uh, honestly, I think Beast and Mystique have gotten together as a couple. They've teased it. They've walked around it through this whole trilogy. Since it seems like she's been at the school this whole time and how upset Hank is by Mystique's alleged death, I think, in the trailer. I think they were a couple. Uh, that's why he takes it so hard, too. But I thought it was a mistake, given the fact that we were just introduced to this new cast with young Cyclops, young Jean, young Storm, Nightcrawler. I love the cast, but moving to Dark Phoenix in their second film, I felt was a little rushed. I wanted more time with the characters to really feel it. So... If you're not going to give me another film of them getting to know each other before you do Dark Phoenix, right off the bat, before things go awry, I need to feel their relationships. I need to know that they've been together for years and that they love each other and care about each other. That's what I need to see if you really want this film to work. On top of the fact that you need Sophie Turner at her A game. She really needs to pull this off. And this first scene where she's sitting there crying in the rain... I like it, honestly. If I can get that kind of emotional response from her throughout the rest of the film, I think she might actually pull this off. Now, in regards to Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique and her possible death, first off, her makeup looks horrible. Compared to what it was like in First Class, Days Future Past, this is a horrible makeup job compared to what we're used to. And I think it goes to just what people have thought or talked about about how Jennifer Lawrence really doesn't care about these roles as much as she used to, maybe. Um, one thing I've hated about Mystique is, yes, she's a good character, but she's a B X-Men character, okay? And she's an A-list actress, which means they have catered the X-Men films, the prequel trilogy, almost around her to make her front and center. Not because Mystique's such an important character, but because she's a famous actress, and I hate when people do that. They're putting the actor and actress before the character. I can't stand when they do it. And I think it's been a little bit of a downfall of this last trilogy. Especially when you look at Days of Future Past, which I consider still the best X-Men film. But the whole premise of that was they took Mystique's blood to create the Sentinels who could absorb people's powers. No, no, no. That's Rogue's ability. That's They should take Rogue. And there is a Rogue cut of the film where that's what they're doing, which makes a lot more sense as far as continuity and powers for the characters. So again, they're taking that just because she's Jennifer Lawrence, taking her character and putting more front and center and giving her more importance. So to take her character out... I'm all for it, honestly. I am totally okay with that. As much as I love Jennifer Lawrence, because she's a great actress, she really is, but I'm okay taking her character out within the first half hour of the film, because honestly, I think the character has served her purpose, never should have had that big a purpose to begin with, so taking her out, that's fine by me. And some people, of course, have been worried this is Simon Kinberg's directorial debut. Now, Kinberg has worked for a long time in these X-Men films. He's been a writer and producer all the way going back to X3. So he knows this world, this universe, probably better than anyone. But directing, writing, and producing are all three very different jobs. Um, he needs to focus on the story. As a writer, of course, you need to focus on the characters and the story. And, you know... I don't know how it's going. I've heard some. there's been some rough patches, of course, with filming. I'm going to wait. You know, I'm going to wait. A lot of people think as a first-time director, he shouldn't have been given a tentpole film. I kind of agree on that. But he's definitely not some fresh filmmaker. He has been in the business doing this for quite some time now. Directing is very different from producing. But... Honestly, I'm going to try to hold off my judgment 
until I see the film and to see just how well he did. Okay, getting back to the actual trailer, guys. So after, you know, the, the Marvel credits roll, you see Jessica Chastain's character, the, the Smith character, uh, talk to Jean and pretty much try to manipulate her is what it is. She's talking about how, you know, they don't understand you, so they fear you, so they try to destroy you, which is the whole X-Men mantra sworn to protect a world that fears and hates them that's what the x-men are all about that's part of the reason why you know i love the x-men compared to other teams like say the avengers or justice league or fantastic four and of course Jean, growing up as a mutant she's lived with that her whole life so she understands that very much now there's one shot here it looks like it's that same scene where mystique goes up to Jean and she allegedly dies you have a shot of charles where he's looking horrified and I think that is the scene where Mystique dies. Of course, they show a burial and a funeral afterwards. Uh, totally understand that. Another shot here. looks like it's in the X-Mansion where Jean has got Magneto hanging from the ceiling and is crushing him. Charles is watching. Just to let you know, Magneto and Charles, probably the two most powerful mutants on the planet. And Jean Grey is just, you know keeping them both at bay and she's got that little tear going out her eye and i love that 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 is a great thing to where yes she's turned evil or doing evil things but inside jean gray is still a good person and she's still you can tell just saddened and feels really bad about what she's doing so again sophie turner is gonna have to pull this off it's resting on her shoulders now I would love it personally as a Cyclops fan if her and Cyclops, played by Ty Sheridan, was a cornerstone to this all. And you do have the shot here with uh, Cyclops talking to Charles about, you know, what should I do? What do we do? Cyclops and Xavier, of course, throughout the course of the X-Men franchise have had a very close relationship in the comics and you can see also in the films. Ten years, of course, have passed since Apocalypse since Cyclops first came to the school. I think they developed that father-son relationship as well. And Cyclops, Scott, kind of at a very low moment with how he feels about Gene, turns to Charles for guidance, and Charles has nothing for him, of course. Maybe he even blames him, much like Hank does, for what has happened to Gene. Speaking of Cyclops, there's a couple of shots here. One is where he's holding Jean and looks like she probably just absorbed the Phoenix Force. She's back in the plane and Cyclops is very worried about her. Skipping along a little bit here, there's another shot where Cyclops is screaming up. You know, Jean's probably causing some shit and he's asking her to stop. There's that scene, of course, in X-Men um, First Class, not X-Men First Class, X3 where Logan decides he's the one that's going to take out Jean and he walks up to her and stabs her saying, I love you. Look, Jean and Wolverine have that flirtatious relationships, okay? It's Cyclops and Jean Grey, okay? And that's what really pissed me off about the first X-Men trilogy was they put so much emphasis on the Wolverine-Jean Grey, Jean Grey relationship but when you read the comics, when you even watch the damn animated series, Cyclops and Jean are the centerpiece. Their relationship is the centerpiece to that storyline. And I'm hoping that that moment we got in X3 where Wolverine essentially saved Jean Grey, I'm hoping we get that moment again, but how it's supposed to be with Cyclops. Years ago, of course, I had an idea in my head of how they could have made X3 better, which was basically not killing James Marsden as Cyclops and, you know, him being, you know, sad most of the film, but at the end, he joins Wolverine and the rest of them for the final battle, and he's the one who ends up, you know, helping Jean Grey along with Wolverine. Anyway, that's just a little pipe dream I had that never happened, and it sucks, but Again, I'm just hoping as a person who reads the comics knows how essential the Cyclops and Jean Grey relationship is to the Phoenix Saga. I hope they show that 
um, it's 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 my dream that it does. Uh, a couple more shots here, of course. You do have uh, Magneto firing the guns at, I think, Jean Grey, it looks like. And, of course, they're not doing anything. You have Storm throwing her lightning. Some people are complaining that all we do or all we see in the X-Men films is just Storm doing the lightning and she could do so much more. But let's not forget, of course, she did throw those tornadoes down in X2. So she does have that power as well. And there's that end logo shot. I really like Dark Phoenix. They're not saying X-Men Dark Phoenix. It's Dark Phoenix with the emphasis on the X. And I think that's a cool logo. The the palette, the color palettes they're using, like when I saw when they're in space or when Smith is talking to Gene, um, the color palettes or the, the effects, I think, look really cool. So I'm interested to see how that compares to, say, something like the MCU. Um it, it all looks interesting. And then, of course, we do have the final shot here where it looks like the X-Men or the other mutants have been captured. They've got collars on, which, you know, throughout the course of the X-Men history, you know that these collars are something that dampens their mutant abilities. So, needless to say, it's going to be a Genosha thing, probably. They're probably being taken to Genosha or being held captive. Uh, but, of course, Jean Grey shows up and wreaks havoc which is fine by me. And of course, one thing somebody pointed out too, the soldiers, if you look on their shoulders, it says MCU. <laughs> Little uh, a tease there, perhaps, or maybe even something that can, you know, say uh, a prophecy of things to come, perhaps. I don't know. Any event, that is the second trailer for Dark Phoenix. Honestly, guys, based off this trailer, I think it's either going to be really awesome or really bad and at this point i can't tell which i honestly have no clue only thing i can agree on is that mystique is probably gonna die and i hope she does her makeup whatever looks absolutely dreadful so i definitely don't want her in the rest of the film if she's gonna look that lazy and bad but i want to know what you guys think now this film it was supposed to come out twice already, okay? It was supposed to come out back in November. Then it was supposed to come out in February, this month, actually, on Valentine's Day. It still didn't. got pushed back. Um, I think, you know, I've heard about reshoots and, you know, doing more things with it. And I'm fine. Honestly, I'm fine pushing the film back, any film, back if that means we get a better quality film and giving them more time to work out the things that they feel aren't working I'm totally okay with that. It's just interesting that, you know, it's, again, it's the end of the era, the end of 20th Century Fox X-Men films, allegedly. I would love, honestly, for them to keep this going. I like the cast they've got going on, uh, you know, with Ty Sheridan, James McAvoy, Sophie Turner, all of them. I love them in Apocalypse. I think the fact that the focus was still on those main characters such as James McAvoy, Jennifer Lawrence, Nicholas Holt, and Michael Fassbender, you didn't get enough time with the newer characters of Nightcrawler, Storm, Cyclops, like that. Um, but I would much rather see the focus turn more towards them and continue it. Obviously, I don't think that's what Disney and Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige have in store, but I also don't want to see them join the MCU. I've always said, in if you look at the comics, the X-Men have always had their own little pocket of the Marvel Universe to where there's so many characters, you really don't need them to join up with the rest of them. The Fantastic Four, I can see, yes, they interact all the time with the Avengers, so putting them in the MCU, I think, makes sense. But there are so many X-Men, so many X-Men villains, you don't need it. You can keep it all separate and I think still work. 20th Century Fox has been doing it semi-good, I guess, for almost 20 years now. You can see how it can work, and I think with the guidance of, a, of Kevin Feige and other people at Marvel and Disney, they can make it better. I have no doubt we could get better X-Men films under Marvel Studios. I know Kevin Feige has said, too, eventually they're going to start making films that aren't part of the MCU. They're going to move beyond the MCU Marvel Studios does. I want this to be the first step, okay? Let's have two cinematic universes, of course, under Marvel Studios, have an MCU and have an X-Men universe. 
that's what I want to see. But we'll just have to wait, guys. But that's all I have for today, of course. Fire back on discussions at gmail.com, Facebook group, and Twitter. Let me know. Are you worried about this film? What do you think of the trailer? Do you think it's going to be bad? What do you want to see Marvel and Disney do with X-Men after this, too? Also, New Mutants, do you think this film is actually going to come out, too, in August? I think it will. People are like, oh, they're not going to release it. New Mutants will come out in some way, shape, or form because they've already spent the money on it, okay? A studio has already spent the money on films like Dark Phoenix and New Mutants, okay? They want to try to get make some money back, so I think it's going to get released somehow just to try to make some money off of it. No studio you know, wants to scrap a project completely when the money's already been spent. But what do you think about the X-Men going to Disney? What do you think they're going to do with it? Just let me know, guys. I love talking X-Men. Obviously, I've talked about X-Men for way too long right now. And I didn't get a chance to talk anything else. But next week is a new week. And hopefully, again, I will get to talk some more stuff then. But until then, guys, of course, you can find me personally on Twitter and Instagram, SlimDaySpring12. And that's it, guys. Go out. Hope you have a good weekend. Uh, Enjoy yourself. And next week, remember, guys, Captain Marvel. That's right. They did the premiere last night. I'm going Friday next week. Of course, I'm planning a review, hopefully with my wife, sometime next weekend. Then, of course, will be the big push for Avengers Endgame. I have no doubt as soon as Captain Marvel comes out, we're getting a new trailer for Endgame. I'm hoping tickets go on sale, and it's going to be a mad dash to the end of April, guys. I can't wait for April, honestly. April, Game of Thrones. April, I'm going to start with Celebration. And, of course, Avengers Endgame. It's going to be awesome. So, But that's it, guys. Hopefully you have a good weekend. Until next time, may the Force be with us all. <laughs>